Today we are going to portray as gods in this 2 to 5 player game called Altar. This is a game where you are a god and you are fighting the other gods because, well, there can only be one god, right? And now you need to become that god. This is a game that will soon hit Kickstarter, which means that what I have here is just a prototype. It is a well-made prototype, but it is still a prototype, so some things might change from this video until you get it on your table. But today I am going to teach you how to set up this game and how to play it. So this here is the setup of the game for a three player game. The first thing we need to do is to pick a god that we would like to portray as. And then we need to take an altar. These altars have two sides, one active side and one inactive side. At the start of the game we take one inactive altar and place at the top of our altar spaces. This board here is your relay. The goddess of love is a little bit different, because she actually starts with an active altar. Next we need to shuffle the follower cards, looking like this. These are the followers that your god can get in the future. In a 3 or 4 player game we also need to remove one or two priestess from the follower deck, depending on if we are 3 or 4 players. This is a three player game, meaning that we remove one priestess. And then we send this deck around to the different players. And now we need to take the amount of follower cards from the deck that we are players plus one. In this case that means that we draw one, two, three cards plus one. Meaning four cards total. Now we place the altar tiles and the shire tiles in the center of the table for all players to easy reach. Depending on how many players you are, you will have a different amount of shires on the table. This is a 3 player game, so we have 6. But we also need to reveal some follower cards faced up on the table. Just like we draw the cards, there needs to be the same amount of cards as there are players plus 1. Again, meaning a total of four cards. The oldest player around the table gets to become the first player. Unless anyone have chosen to play the ancient god. This fella here is really, really old and will always be the first player. There used to be many different gods in this world. But eventually humans got a little bit sick of them and started well, not paying that much attention to them anymore. This led the gods to slowly, slowly fade away. Because, well, nobody were worshipping them anymore. But there were a few gods that hid in the darkness. One day, these gods decided that it was time to come back and take over the world again. But of course, there can only be one god. So now we have to do everything that we can to become that one god. We will do that by playing cards from our hands. These are our followers. These are the ones that would help us construct our shires and altars by simply doing different rituals and worshipping. But there's also some abilities on these followers that we can choose to use. A player's turn basically consists of three different steps. The first one is to draw a card. The second one is to do a main action. And the third one is not mandatory, but you can choose to do a free action. Or you can actually do as many free actions that you can or want to do. But on your turn, the first thing you need to do is to draw a card. When you are going to draw a card on your turn, you can choose to draw one of the visible faced up cards on the table or the top one from the draw deck. If you draw one of the cards from the table, you immediately need to refill that space with a new card from the draw pile. That was the first thing you need to do on your turn. Simply draw a card. Pretty damn simple, right? The second thing in a player's turn is to do one 
main action. And the first action I want to show you is to play an ability from one of your followers on your hand. So this abomination here could be one of your followers. But what does the card actually mean? Well up here we have the name of your follower. And here we have a cool little artwork showing you how that follower looks. Down in the bottom here you can see a text. This text is your ability. And this is the ability that you can play if you have this follower on your hand. The symbol that you see up here is the symbol for a free action. Meaning that if your follower have this symbol here, you could use this follower as a free action. Discarding the card and then playing the ability. This follower right here have a symbol up in the left corner. This green symbol here stands for influence. This means that this follower will actually be on the table for one round. And the ability will last for that long. Followers that have a blue little character up in the left corner, they stand for protection. Meaning that their abilities will protect the god and their relay from various enemies and abilities. And lastly we have followers that have the red symbol. This means that they have an ability that will activate one of your inactive altars. So if you play these, you get to activate one of your inactive altars. Meaning flipping the altar token around. There are quite a few different abilities on the different followers. So it might be a good idea for you to just look them through before you start to play. Just so you get a little feel of what you actually can do. That was the first thing you could do. To simply play a card, an ability from one of your followers that you have on your hand. The second thing you can choose to do is to do a ritual. Your followers will perform rituals in your honor. So you are able to build shires. But to be able to build these shires you need to discard followers with the ritual symbol. This star down here is the ritual symbol. And when you have discarded three followers with this symbol, you are then able to build your Shire in your Relame. Now some of your followers have two symbols down in the right corner. The first one here is the worship symbol. And the second one is, well, the ritual symbol that you've seen before. If a follower have these two symbols, their ritual will count as two instead of one. Meaning that if you play the Amazon, then you only need one more follower with the ritual symbol to be able to build your Shire. Which brings us to the third main action, which is actually to use one of your followers worship ability. If they have the symbol of worship down in the right corner, you can use them and place them next to your relay. This will activate this follower's protection. And now they will protect your relay in different ways. But you need to place them on your table to activate them. Meaning that if you have them in your hand, well sorry my friend, but it will not help you. During your turn you can also choose to just pass, sit back and do nothing at all. So that was the main actions that you can do during your turn. But don't forget that your god actually has an ability as well. And that one is stated at the bottom of your board. The god of light here for example have an ability that makes rituals count as two. And they have protection against demons and seers. But after you have done your main actions you can also do as many free actions as you would like to do. Remember these are the follower cards that have this little symbol up in the right corner. If you have these cards well you can discard them and do those abilities. And that's the way the game goes on. A player taking their turn doing whatever they can or want to do and then the turn moves on to the player to the left and so on. And the game will keep on going in this way until one of these three things will happen. Either if you simply empty out the draw pile on the table and all of the faced up followers are gone. 
or if the shires runs out on the table, the game would also end. But of course, the game will also end if a player managed to fulfill their requirements. If a player have managed to build one shire and activated four altars, they are the winner. But if they have managed to activate two shires, they actually only need to activate three altars to win the game. And if they have managed to activate all three shires, they only need two active altars to become the winner. If there should ever be a tie, the one that has the most shires wins. And if there's still a tie, the one that placed the last shire is the winner and becomes the ultimate god to rule these tiny despicable humans. And that, my friend, is how you play Alter. This is a funny, cool little game. I played this at three players and I think it just worked quite, quite well. If you are two players, the rules will look just a little bit different, but there's not that much difference. The biggest difference is actually during the setup. But this game is a lot of fun. It's around 40 minutes of gameplay, so it's not that long either. You could really easily take this up, teach a new player how to play it in no time and have a lot of good strategy fun. And even if you have played this once or twice before, there is still a lot of difference in the gameplay and how the results will be. And it's really up to you to use your followers the right way to be able to actually become the mighty, mighty god. The artwork in the game is great I love the little boards I love the colors in this now like I told you in the beginning this is a prototype so some things might change but from the look of it now I love it plus it has this little magnetic lid <laughs> that my friend was Alter from the red Joker, a two to five player card game where you portray as a god trying to take the other guards out and become the last standing god of them all. This is a cool game. I love the artwork. I really like the gameplay. It's a nice little easy game. It's a nice little easy game to learn, but it's a hard game to master. And the artwork is just really brilliant. I can't wait to see the campaign. Can't wait to see what's going to happen with this one. I hope this video helped you figure out more about this game. But if you want to know even more about the game, well, check out the links down in the description and it will tell you everything you need to know. If you like this video, well, please subscribe, like the channel or whatever you want to do. But most importantly, my friend, do not forget to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.